before we can start on our beautiful journey of adaptability and thriving, we all have to agree on what a dandelion is. Did you know that one dandelion can turn into 200 dandelions in one year? And you might be wondering, why am I even talking about dandelions? And a short answer, there is much strength and inspiration to be found in something as simple as a yellow flower. Historically, dandelions have an important part in medicine. We believe that it could cure rashes, cure depression, even it could protect us against the plague. I, fortunately, I don't think dandelions can cure depression alone, but we have established that it's highly nutritious, it's filled with iron and calcium, and it contains more vitamin A than spinach. But it doesn't taste any better than spinach. Depending if you like a dandelion or not, it is known for something that's incredible, and that's its adaptability. Because you can find dandelions in wastelands or in beautiful fields of flowers. And depending on where they take root, they're either welcomed as a beautiful flower or seen as a guest that's never leaving. You can pull it off by its roots, you can cut off its flowers, you can even set fire to it. But if you do not manage to get all of its roots, it will come back in months, weeks, sometimes even days. And it will also come back for up to 13 years. It's a highly adaptable plant, because as you can see, they grow in concrete. If you consider the qualities we have talked about from a dandelion now, I would like you to reflect on two known concepts, resilience and robustness. In short, if you are robust, you withstand something, and if you are resilient, you adapt with something. So let's take an example. You're having a disagreement with a friend, you're sad, you're upset, and it's a difficult time. When the conflict is resolved, if you are robust, you're happy to go back to normal, forgive and forget, and you found a way to withstand the situation while it was going on. If you are resilient, on the other hand, you would not be happy with going back to normal or forgive and forget. You would reflect on how, why, when, why not, so that you could ensure that if you're ever in the same situation again, you would know how to continue operating despite of anything happening. So if we keep thinking about the word resilience, think about what, where have you read it, what do you combine with it, do you think of, do you get images in your head? Because most times when I read about resilience, it doesn't really tell you how to get it. I wrote a thesis on cyber resilience, and that's the main experience I was left with. Almost all the sources and papers I read said, you need to be resilient to protect against modern threats. And the advice on how you could become resilient was simply to build resilience, which tells you absolutely nothing. So it seems like this beautiful concept that we all know is so important has become empty. What's the point of building strength if you don't know how to do it? And that's really sad, because resilience is a fantastic concept. So I propose that we change the way we look at it. Let's change the narrative of how we see the ability to adapt and to thrive under less happier, fortunate circumstances. I suggest that we call it adaptive capabilities, and that we pair it with the image or symbolism of a dandelion. So the features of a dandelion, um, they're highly adaptable, they don't require much to thrive. It has inspired a theory called dandelion children, and that theory describes children that grow up in horrible conditions, with a lack of love and support or opportunities, but somehow they end up thriving. Why? We don't really know, but they adapted. Opposite to that, you have orchid children. And if you've ever tried keeping an orchid happy, you would know that could be extremely difficult, because an orchid is highly 
vulnerable to its environment. So if you reflect for yourself, are you more like a dandelion or more like an orchid? And while you do so, I want to be clear. I'm not saying that your life is easy. I'm not saying that you haven't or currently aren't tackling situations that are way more than we should be able to expect from people. Because life is unfair, and sometimes you can't do anything to affect the situation you're in. So as a society, we have created kindness, support, an environment that gives us kindness and safety, which is extremely important. But I do think that it has gone a bit too far. It seems like if we're faced with an opportunity or just a situation that we feel uncomfortable with or scared of, we simply avoid it. It's the easiest thing to do to not attempt something. But when we do that, we're robbing ourselves of chances to grow, to adapt, to learn, and to be dandelions. Because if we continue to be afraid of challenges, we're lowering the bar of what we think we should and could handle. If you consider a simple challenge, like having a TED Talk, if you do it, you feel great regardless of the outcome because you did it. You may be laughing, you may be smiling, you may not. I'm going to feel great regardless, because I'm really proud of it. And that goes for challenges. When you connect sadness, uh, fear, anxiety, or frustration to a challenge, you make it that more difficult to attempt the challenge the next time. And I can almost guarantee that if you find it in you to accept the smaller challenges, you will become tougher and stronger regardless. But it's really important that we realize and accept that there has to be a balance. Because as we said, life is unfair, and sometimes there's absolutely nothing you can do to change your circumstances. And we have to accept that. And one way to accept that might be to tackle the challenges we can affect. We become stronger, tougher, prouder, more confident. And we can tell ourselves that we know that if we had a chance to affect this, we would. And we would thrive in doing so. So you have to know when to push and when to pause. And that's not easy. And it's different for everyone. If you don't recognize any of the patterns I've spoken about in yourself or in others, that's absolutely fine. But I would love to talk to you, because I think you're the most adaptable dandelion there is. So please come find me after. Next time you find yourself in a situation that's challenging, that brings out fear or anxiety in you, I want you to tell yourself that you're going to take the challenge. You're going to pause for a second, but then you're going to push. First, try to be self-aware of the situation. Be aware of the situation, of you, and you in the situation. For example, if you're asked to perform something or to deliver something at work, but you're afraid that you're not going to deliver to expectations, so you might not put in much effort because you're not going to do well regardless. Try to identify what you're feeling. Are you scared? Are you sad? Are you upset? Are you feeling bored, lazy? Look at it from your own perspective. And whatever you identify in the first step, you will bring to step number two. That's self-reflection. So here you take whatever you found by being aware, and you reflect on it. Why am I feeling this way about this task? Am I scared? Why am I scared? Am I afraid to get feedback? Do I take feedback personally? Do I need to change this? How can I change this? This is going to be very individual to you, because it will depend on how honest we want to be with ourselves and how much we want to put into changing our patterns. So number three is pause, 
a damp push. Because we don't really know why we have dandelion or orchid tendencies, at least not a conclusive answer. So we have to take all the opportunities we can to become dandelions so that we can handle the more difficult stuff later. Follow the three steps and think of yourself as a dandelion. If you plant your roots far enough in the ground, whatever challenge hits you, you will still be standing. So are you a dandelion or an orchid? Thank you.